Hello everyone, my name is Chelsea and welcome or welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we are talking about some of my favorite adventure fantasy. of the Choose Your Own Adventure Readathon, which is a readathon that I created and came up with. We are in round two, which is fantasy themed, and so I figured why not share some of my favorite adventure style fantasy, specifically questing fantasy, because with this readathon, you're going on a choose your own adventure type of story, but it is for a quest. We are looking for a specific item, and you make choices as you go along which give you your prompts during the readathon, but in general, that's sort of what the questing type of fantasy is. So I have like seven things here that I wanna share with you. We're gonna jump right on in because the first one I feel like is quite obvious in my opinion. It's going to be The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. Obviously, this is a series that most people know about. It's very classic. Some people even say that it's like, this is where modern sort of fantasy started, was this series. We have different races of characters, we have a big bad that they're trying to defeat, but at the heart of it, it is one big questing story of them trying to get rid of this ring of power. I absolutely love this one. I actually read this for the first time in eighth grade, I wanna say, um, and fell in love with it. I have read them many times over. I also have many, many different editions. Um, and so this one here is, I think, my newest acquisition for Lord of the Rings stuff, although I think I bought it last year. Um, but we have the Fellowship of the Ring. Like, I just absolutely love these covers. The Two Towers and The Return of the King. And so this is an epic fantasy where they go on a quest and there's lots of stuff in here. Like it's a pretty big three book series. Since I've read it so many times, I do feel like there's certain parts that I skim over a little bit because of the fact that you can get into a lot of description of like the atmosphere and the like scenery that's going on. But I know a lot of people love that as well. Um, but this is one of those ones that is a personal favorite, is very classic in the questing fantasy sort of books, and if you haven't tried it out, I definitely think you should. I will also say the movies, I think, are a really good adaption of this. Sometimes I actually like them more than this, um, like they were just really, really well done, so I had to mention this one first. The next book I have on this list is Stardust by Neil Gaiman. This one's actually quite short, so like the opposite of Lord of the Rings. Um, this one also has a movie that I fell in love with that movie first before I ever picked this one up. They do differ quite a bit in some of the like smaller details of it, but I love them both equally, like in different ways. Um, but this one follows our main character of Tristran, who lives in the city of Wall, because there's like a wall running through the edge of town and comes to find out that that wall is sort of like a portal between his normal contemporary, contemporary for his time at least, city and a fantasy world. There is a fallen star that comes down and he's going on a quest to go find this fallen star for a girl that he really likes in his town and fantasy stuff evolves from there. But there is a quest at the heart of this. I really love the sort of atmosphere of it. This is Neil Gaiman, so if you've read any other Neil Gaiman stuff, you sort of have that feeling of the atmosphere. It does get dark at points, um, but this, besides some of his other ones that are actually like marketed toward middle grade, I do feel like is a pretty good bridging point between some of his darker work as well. Like, I just really, really love this. It is short, so it was very quick to read. Um, and yeah, I had to put it on this list because there is a quest at the heart. The next novel I have here is Kings of the Wild by Nicholas Ames. This one is one that's one of my more recent reads. I think I read it last year, potentially. It could be the year before that. I don't know, but I really love this one. I love the fact that it is obviously a quest, but the characters are middle-aged. Like, you don't see that very often in these types of books. They're a band of mercenaries who had disbanded, they've basically retired, and they're coming back together to save the daughter, like the adult daughter of one of the men, because she is trapped like behind enemy lines. I love the different 
almost like fantasy professions that we have here because like you can clearly see who is supposed to be the magician and like the berserker and that kind of stuff so we do have those sort of like almost like D&D &D elements here but it's also very much found family it has some very humorous parts but it also has action and doesn't pull the punches like I really loved the makeup of this story there is that quest at the heart of it but the found family aspects and the friendship between these middle-aged men trying to go back on a quest after they've been retired for a while was what made me fall in love with this. A young adult book that I have here is Shadow of the Fox by Julie Kagawa. So this again has a quest. Our main character is actually someone who has been raised by monks because she is half human and half kitsune and something happens to like the monastery where she's been living and she's tasked with taking an ancient scroll to another temple I'm pretty sure. Um, along the way she comes across a band of different characters there's also people working against her um, but that quest is at the heart of it this one really read almost like an anime like I know that sounds a little bit weird to say but like this would be the perfect anime like if I was watching something I would want to watch this so I really love the descriptions of everything happening you had some almost stereotypical anime like side characters here like the way that they were described I could pinpoint who they were supposed to be like what kind of personality they were supposed to have I fell in love with this it also has really good found family vibes and this is the first in a series so there is more questing to do after this first book but I love the way that this was put together and I've read other work of Julie Kagawa's that I really enjoyed um, I think another one that I could have put here was the Iron Fae Chronicles because they do have some questing in there but that to me is more of a contemporary fantasy vibe so I didn't put that here I put this one instead but that is also a good series to try now we have some middle grade. The first one I have here, I feel like a lot of people would pick if they had to make a list like this, and it's going to be Percy Jackson. I have the first book here in my hands, Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. First of all, I'm very excited for the TV show that is going to come out on Disney+. Plus. They've had some promo images out recently that look adorable, um, but yeah, the heart of this, again, is questing. I absolutely love this series. I will say I read these when I was in my 20s, so I was not even the target demographic for this, um, but it takes Greek mythology and brings it into modern day in the United States, and I really loved being able to see the parallels from certain Greek mythology stories to the more modern day setting. And in this first one, I'm pretty sure Percy Jackson, because it says the lightning thief, he's going on a quest to find Zeus's missing lightning bolt. There are multiple books in this series, multiple books in the spinoff. I'm pretty sure there is a quest at the heart of every single one, and this is just a really fun middle grade that does teach people about Greek mythology as well so this is one that I know is taught in some classrooms here in the States and I absolutely love it. Another middle grade that is probably not one that you see mentioned very often unless you're on my channel because I know I've talked about it before is Del Toro Quest by Emily Rhoda. I mean Quest is in the name of the series because this is actually a bind up of all the books in the series. I think there's eight books. Yes, there are. They say them on the back. Um, and this is a middle grade series that I first read some of the books when I was actually like around junior high or so. It's very, very glaring from the window today. That's okay. Um, around junior high or so, they were actually my brother's books, but I was such a reader that I was reading anything I could get my hands on. And I didn't get to finish this series until I was actually an adult and bought this bind up. But again, Del Toro Quest every single book has a quest going on. The overall quest that we have here is our main character of Leaf being tasked with finding gems that fit into this belt for his like country that he lives in um, in order to defeat the big bad that is happening. So every single book in here goes to another land that should have one of these gems there and there's puzzles and riddles and those like really fun aspects to the story. I absolutely love this one. Again, found family vibes. I think a lot of the questing ones that I personally like have those vibes in there. That's one of my favorite tropes. Um, and so yes, questing in every single book. No wonder they called it Del Toro Quest. Moving to a manga, I have The Seven Princes of the Thousand Year Labyrinth. This is by Atori Haruno and Aikawa Yu. There's only four volumes in this entire series. So we do have volume one, volume two, volume three, 
and volume four. I know the last time I talked about these at some point on my channel, somebody mentioned that some of these were going out of print. So keep that in mind if you want to read it. You might be able to find them used or secondhand, but it's only four volumes. And while this one's not like people going on a quest, they end up thrown into a quest. This basically starts with people in this sort of like castle area. Um, and one of the characters specifically doesn't remember how he got there. He's just been sort of thrown in with these people. Um, but they're there to solve the labyrinth of this castle because whoever like does it first ends up being the next emperor of this like whole country. Um, and it does have lots of riddles and perils and puzzles and all this kind of stuff. And so while this isn't like a specific like start to finish, like we're going on a quest to do stuff, it does have those elements of a quest that I really enjoy of like these people actually trying to figure out which way they should go. There is a whole labyrinth element again, found family vibes throughout here um, and so I had to include this manga on the list even though there are some slight elements that make me say maybe it's not a full quest but it felt very questy to me and it's one of my favorites so I had to put it here. And then finally I actually have a comic series. This is going to be Rat Queens by Curtis J. Weeby. So this is the first volume which is called Sass and Sorcery. I have not finished this comic series yet. I think I've read the first three or four volumes and I have more of them that I do need to read, but I remember absolutely loving the first few volumes of this series. It is very D&D-esque. We have a whole group of women, all of different races, different abilities. So like, again, you're going to be able to tell who is more of a sorcerer, who is more of like a rogue, that kind of thing. And they're going on quests throughout this comic. Uh, I think they're sort of like a band of mercenaries as well. So they end up like picking up these quests and having to go solve things. And then as you go through the comic, there is some bigger issues that are going on as well. But the art style is really fun throughout here. And it was one that I really, really enjoyed and it stuck with me for a while. So I do want to eventually reread these ones and continue on with the series. But like I said, the first like three or four volumes that I read had lots of questing, lots of fun characters, found family elements as well, because we can't avoid any of that apparently in these books. Um, and so if you want to try out a comic series with questing, this is a good one to do. And so I think that is going to be it for me today. All of these books are ones that I absolutely loved, very, very highly rated fantasies with quests in them that I thought was just perfect for the Choose Your Own Adventure readathon. If you have any specific ones that have questing that you liked that I did not mention today, leave it down below because I would love to read them. But otherwise, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up to let me know. Subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more videos. I do have videos coming out on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so I will see you then. Bye. So we do have too much glare on the camera.